near Marshall Field. All right, it's K-Light 95.9. He's on the telephone with us. Hi, Bob, how you doing? Just fine, Mark. How are you? All right, real good. You're uh, getting ready to rehearse your, your new show, right? Yes, I am, and uh, we're going we're gonna to rehearse it one more time here, and then tomorrow night is our opening night. And you're at Second City? Second City ETC. We're behind the main stage okay, here in the back. Uh, they're kind of trying to keep us under wraps. Uh, <laughs> I don't know... I don't know what they're afraid of, but no, no, it's a, it's a great space. It's right at the corner of North and Wells here in the city. Great. And um, Let me give you a proper introduction for those who don't know who you are. Saturday Night Live writer Bob Odenkirk, formerly of Naperville, right? That's right. And, I, I lived there years ago, back before the gold rush. Okay, and now you have a, a one-man comedy review called Half My Face is a Clown. That's right. I love the title. <laughs> you like it. Oh, People yeah. People seem to like it. Uh, yeah. And yet no one knows what it means. And you're in your second season with uh, Saturday Night, right? Yes, I am. This I just finished my second season, and uh, I'm going back for a third. Uh, you know, you can never take too much punishment. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, you know what? We're going to play a little game of This Is Your Life, Bob Odenkirk. Okay. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, see if you can identify this voice. You probably won't be able to, but uh, what's interesting about Bob is before there was Saturday Night Live, there was Thursday Night Live. He actually started in radio, I want you to know, about seven years ago at SIU with, with me at WIDB. You know who that is? Oh, man. <laughs> who is that? It's, it's Mark Vasco. Mark, yeah. hey. <laughs> That's me. Are you doing the sports out there? I sure am. Oh, God, what's going on? We, we what are the Huskies to... doing? <laughs> <laughs> Naperville North, we're both graduates. What can I say? We're having uh -huh. our 10-year reunion coming up, too, but I'm probably not going to be there. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> they um, don't invite me, Mark. They don't? No, they don't. I'm sorry, you make way too much money for the rest of us. Yeah, there you go. You could buy the reunion. Hey, that's great. I'm glad to hear you're working out there. Yeah, I am. I have been for a couple of years now. I just thought I'd throw that out that, you know, way back when, this all started in radio with Tim Thomas, who still works with you and what, in Duck Logic, too? Yeah, well, Tim's still working out here and working with that group, and, uh, yeah. How, what did, did you guys do a radio show together? Yeah, well, you know, our, my favorite part was the, the Nostradamus bit we used to do on that <laughs> Thursday Night Live show. Whenever we used to say anything, and, and Nostradamus <laughs> would say, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, we did a radio program, uh, comedy, uh, once a week down there. It's SA. That's where I got my start, really. That's yeah, where I, when, I, I, uh, uh, when I mentioned to Mark that, uh, that you were going to be on the, the program today, he said, oh, I've got to talk to him. I know the guy real well. So That's great. Well, Mark, you've got to come see the show. Everybody has to. Oh, I will. Are you still doing stand-up? Because last time I saw you was probably last year when you were at Who's On First in Elmhurst. Um, no, I'm, not, I'm trying to. That's what this show's all about, kind of. Uh, I, I've done a lot of stand-up, and I've enjoyed it a lot, but uh, I, I feel it's kind of limiting. And uh, doing this show in a theater gives me a chance to do longer pieces and more theatrical pieces mm. uh, that take a little more build. And uh, they're more conceptual. They're a little, maybe a little bit harder to get a handle on, but once you do, I ho hopefully it's more rewarding. Uh, so, so I'm not really doing stand-up this summer, but I might do a little, just mm -hmm. for laughs. So this gives you a chance to stretch out a little bit and uh, do a little more extensive writing then. Right, exactly. It, it's, uh, the pieces, I think, are, are more rewarding to an audience, too, than, say, a stand-up act would mm -hmm. be. As much as I, I you know, stand-up is great for what it is, but uh, I like the idea of doing longer pieces and hopefully having more uh, more value for each piece. Getting away from those one-liners. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like nothing, that. nothing against one-liners. No, there no. are a few in the show, but, uh, you know. You know, I, I'd like to take you back, though. How'd you get started with uh, Saturday Night Live? How'd that come around? Well, I, uh, I was working at uh, WIDB in, in Southern Illinois and doing radio comedy and writing a lot of scripts down there, and mm -hmm. I got the idea that possibly... Uh, I could do this for a living. <laughs> uh, you know, college fills your head with all kinds of garbage. <laughs> so I went to uh, Chicago and uh, persisted in my um, dream, dream world, and uh, eventually ran into some people who read a lot of my stuff and liked it. Uh -huh. uh, a guy named Robert Smigel, who uh, was hired to, to write for Saturday Night Live. And then over about a two-year period, I continued to wait tables, do a little stand-up comedy, and write for Saturday Night Live and send scripts in and, and consult with Robert on scripts that he was working on at the time. 
that was the year that Lorne Michaels returned to producing the show. So it was sort of a slow uh, build to that then. Yeah, it took a good two and a half years. Before. What are what are some of the bits that you've written uh, that we've seen? Well, I wrote the I wrote the drill sergeant scene uh, with Matthew Modine. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote a Brinkley scene where David Brinkley took the show outside <laughs> his Sunday morning news show. Uh -huh. uh, I wrote uh, Frost White, the uh, the, the ripoff of Snow White that was on <laughs> with Gina Davis. Uh, uh, who wrote Wayne's World? Wayne's World is mostly written by Mike Myers. Because where'd they come up with Aurora? I thought you did since you were right here, obviously. Well, uh, you know, uh, we kind of talk to each other, and uh, <laughs> Mike's a good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, he was looking for a town. Actually, he picked that out himself. He was working at Second City here in Chicago. And he must have seen Aurora on the map and decided that that was uh, sufficiently, uh, um, I don't want to say anything bad. Uh, let me say, uh, yeah, nobody's going to come and see you. Sufficiently quaint. <laughs> uh, sufficiently you, quaint. Have you ever written for uh, Hans and Franz? Or oh, that, yeah, uh, I've, yeah, I've worked with those guys a lot. And Hans and Franz is mostly written by Dana and Kevin. Oh, uh, they do. But uh, okay. my idea was the... Uh, you know how they pull the strings and their their breast muscles <laughs> jump? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that was that was my contribution. <laughs> uh, that highbrow comedy we like. Uh, so. Yeah, you know, I like to get into the f physical depth. That once uh, in that a while. breast thing must be you know from the SIU days or something. Uh, Are they going to put you on the air? Uh, what? Are they going to put you on the air? Like, can we actually see you sometime? Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, that's something that uh, maybe might come out of this show. I've I've done one or two roles. I. I played the page in the Tom Hanks show at the opening. Mm. A lot of people remember me from that. Uh, it was real <laughs> short, but the most memorable part about it was uh, I got to stand right next to Keith Richards. Oh, that's neat. On camera, which was a kick for me. I bet. And he was standing, which was a kick for him. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we both got a thrill out of it. Uh -huh. And um Hey, you know, he seems like a guy who'd have bad breath. I mean, he, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he smokes like 20 cigarettes a minute. Well, if he has bad breath, nobody's going to tell him about it. <laughs> that's that's the problem with being a star that big. Uh -huh. Nobody will, mo nobody's going to tell you when your breath give you, is bad. Give you the truth, huh? But you he's a, he, he, yeah, he was kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Bungie? He's done in by the years, huh? Uh, I've got to uh, I've got to make way for uh, the weather here, but I want you to give the phone number so we can come uh, get tickets and see you out at Second City. What's uh, what, what? Who do we call for that? Okay, uh, you call the Second City ETC box office, and their number is six four two eight one eight nine. All right, six four two eighty one eighty nine. It's Bob Odenkirk. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. That's all right, Mark. And hey, Mark. Yeah. What radio station are you listening to? <laughs> hey, White. WKKD. You're our big winner. 95.9 to be exact. Okay, Thanks. fine. Thank you, Bob. All right. Good luck with the show. Thank you. All right, bye now. Bye.